Okay, so this is take three of today's May video. It's the 1st of May 2023. It's about 3.30 p.m. UK time. And this is my forecast for May 2023. And this is the third time I've tried this today. Mercury bloody retrograde. So, big month coming up. I've been waiting for this month for a long, long time. I've been looking in my ephemeris, my planetary timetable, since ooh, 2005, 2006 at this one. I've been thinking, oh, let's get to May 23 and then let's get past it. Because the stuff that's coming up this month is big. It's bigger than the stuff, it's bigger than the Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January 2020, which was the signal and the forerunner for Corona. Um, it's as big as the Grand Crosses in 2012. This is big what's coming up. So there's a number of things going on in May. We start the month in the first 10 days on a Mercury retrograde. Mercury will be retrograde until early morning on the 15th UK time. And in the first week or two of the month, with the exception of this small event in Britain called the King's Coronation, with the exception of that, this is a month where the first half of the month is relatively quiet. It's frustrating because Mercury's retrograde. And although Mercury isn't actually hitting any of the big planets in the sky, that gives it free reign. It's not being bound by any interaction with other planets. So this is a time where there's a lot of bog-standard Mercury retrograde influence going on. A lot of frustration, impatience, irritation, and um, a little bit of anger because things just aren't working out the way people expect them to. My iPad's on the blink. Great. Um... Add to this that 16, 17 hours before the coronation, there's a 95% total eclipse of the moon at 14 degrees 58 of Scorpio. This is two minutes of one degree away from 15 Scorpio, which as uh, most astrologers will know, is the middle of Scorpio, halfway between equinox and solstice, and it is the Sawain point. The full moon will be on the Samhain point. The eclipsed Scorpio full moon is on the Samhain point as the sun is on the Beltane point. In the old mythology of the Celtic races of Northwest Europe, there were only two seasons. Summer starting at Beltane, winter starting at Samhain. It's a particularly potent eclipse. And to be crowned king of a country in the shadow of a almost total eclipse of the moon, not only on the Samhain point, but in Scorpio. Not a good move. But uh, if this video works, I'll be doing my coronation video straight after. Um, Pluto goes retrograde on the first day of May. Mercury will stop going retrograde on the 15th of May. After which, there's going to be quite a lot of sudden developments. Jupiter will leave Aries around the 16th of May, day each side, depending on where in the world you are. It will move into zero degrees of Taurus. Pluto will be at zero degrees of Aquarius. And then on the 19th, 20th of May, Mars will leave Cancer and move into zero degrees of Leo. And on the 20th of May, 19th and 20th of May, Mars will exactly oppose Pluto. Mars opposite Pluto is one of the most challenging aspects in astrology. In a birth chart, it can lead to violence, aggression, irrational anger. Although, if a person with that in their chart is wise and they're guided when young, they can change that from being a sledgehammer into being a homeopathic laser. People with Mars opposite Pluto also become black belts in martial arts. They become very incisive, very self-empowered, very good at channeling energy in a way that's focused, sharp and direct. But it can be a sledgehammer. Pluto deals with the hidden, the occulted, the mysterious. It deals with research, uncovering things, bringing things to the surface. It deals with psychology. It deals with subatomic particles and nuclear fission. 
and nuclear fusion, more fission rather than fusion. Mars deals with direct action. It can be confrontational and aggressive. It can be assertive and projective. It is dynamic. It is active. Mars opposite Pluto happens in the sky every two years, give or take a month or two. And it is a difficult transit. Problem is this year, it's being exactly squared by Jupiter. Both Pluto and Mars will be squared by Jupiter on the 19th, 20th. And Jupiter is going to hugely amplify the Mars-Pluto energy. This is happening on a number of prominent people's chart, in a number of prominent people's charts. So we've got a two to three to four day period over the new moon in Taurus on May the 19th, which is actually quite a nice new moon. But Mars opposite Pluto squared Jupiter. So anybody with planets at zero degrees of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio or Aquarius is really going to know about this. Now, if you hide under the bed, the bed will collapse on top of you. So don't. It would be very, very easy for a large number of people, both individually and collectively, to get their buttons pushed at this time. It is a short, sharp, potentially violent aspect that could erupt in various scenarios around the world, whether it's economic, political or military, Sudan, Ukraine, and it could be quite damaging in a short, sharp way. This is not something that's going to be long and drawn out. It's going to be incisive, sharp, and probably very penetrative. The symbolism here for me is very much like the pimple on top of the boil. The boil that's been festering, and then suddenly the poison comes to the top, and it will be lanced. So as far as individuals go, this is to all of you, basically, regardless of what sign or what your horoscope is, I consider, as I said in my January video for the year ahead, I consider the lineup on the 18th to the 20th, let's cover myself and say the 17th to the 21st of May, to be the most difficult aspect of the year, especially as it's coming after two very pokey eclipses. So, if you work on the premise that you're going to get your buttons pushed, you can then choose if you want to modify your behavior you can do what the rest of the world will do which will go headless chicken and start going oi is that are you looking at me in a bad way you know and it can get quite nasty or you can be intelligent enough to go oh this is really intense right this is only going to last two or three days right i hear what you say i've listened i've heard you I'm going to take it on board and I'm going to walk away now and I'm going to think about it for two or three days and then I'm going to come back and we'll sit down and have a proper discussion and we'll come to an acceptable conclusion. Now, if you can do that, you're going to save yourselves and probably a lot of other people a lot of grief. What you can't do is hide. The dynamicism of this aspect says that if you hide, you're, going to get, you're just going to get clobbered. The universe will clobber you. So you can be assertive and projective, but don't, free, don't be confrontational and aggressive and deliberately choose not to let your buttons get pushed. By the time we're into the 21st of May, it's all changed. Jupiter has moved from a cardinal sign into a fixed sign, as has Mars. So there's going to be a much greater energy of resilience, determination, thoroughness and perseverance. It may well be that the more we get into the last 10 days of March, a large number of people look at each other and go, have we been mad? What have we been doing? How did we let things get to this state? Whereas those who are astute and intelligent enough not to let their buttons get pushed will go, oh, thank God I sidestepped that one. Because from the 21st onwards, it seems that we enter a much calmer period. And I am going to cautiously suggest that astrologically speaking, the time from the 21st of May onwards is going to represent the start of the rest of 2023 in a much more gentle way than anything that's preceded it. By the time we're into the last 10 days of May, the hardest times, astrologically speaking, of 2023 will be over. That's collectively for the planet. 
Of course, certain individuals are still going to be getting hammered by Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. That's the nature of things. But collectively, this is, this is one of those sudden escalations that come to a sharp point and then decrease equally quickly. Don't let your buttons get pushed, folks. We can't see it yet. We can sense it in the background. And I'm pretty clear, I'm, I think I know what's likely to happen, but I don't want to voice it yet. Let's see what transpires, particularly in the Northern European theatre of our operations, over the next week or so. Then let's get the Mercury retrograde out of the way, and then it's going to be incisive. So, yeah, there will be a few more videos. Let's hope this video works. Bloody Mercury retrograde. Right, hope this has been interesting and helpful. Be cautious around that lineup on the 18th, 19th, 20th. Have a good month. Be intelligent. Don't let your buttons get pushed. Catch you in a few weeks' time, but you'll see a lot more of me over the coming few weeks.